Hiya, Gordon back. This is uh, the third of, in the series of videos about the Bible and about how wonderful the Bible is and how much I like the Bible. Not. Okay. Um, so we talked about the Garden of Eden and the ridiculousness of the Garden of Eden about why God would would not accept responsibility for his massive error, blamed everybody else and and condemned them to death. Now we'll see a pattern emerging here. Death is something that the God of the Old Testament was pretty good at. Okay, in fact, I think he enjoyed it because he did it so often. Now, you know, I was talking about God having, he, he was an ist, he was like a chauvinist and, and he was a um, misogynist and, and, uh, and uh, a racist as well. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, God had his chosen people. Okay, God had God had a chosen people, the people that he liked the best. He liked them much better than everybody else. In fact, he liked them so much that he spent many, many years telling them to go around and kill everybody else. Okay, in fact, there's a, there's a, um, a, a paragraph, a passage which says, and this is interesting, I've mentioned this before, because I'm a jealous God. Now, I've had people telling me, ah, well, well that, you see, what they do is to say, ah, well, if you go back to the original Hebrew, um, blah, 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 okay? No, I'm not interested in that jealous God. As a therapist, I've worked with people who are jealous, okay? Jealousy is a very, very um, unresourceful state for somebody to be in because they can't think clearly, okay? I don't want my God to be in a state of not clear thinking. I don't want him to be jealous because jealous means he's attached to something and if he doesn't get it, he gets angry. All right. Now, because he's all powerful, okay, omnipotent, remember, well, you know, angry and all powerful, <sighs> bad combination. And he seemed to like to wield that kind of power when he was angry. Anyway, so what he did, he had his favourite people, okay? He didn't necessarily treat them very nicely, but he treated them a damn sight better than he did other people. Um, and he just, he kind of used to send them off to kill his favourite king, David. It was the best killer, the best killer that he had. But there's a passage in, in, in probably in Leviticus. Leviticus is kind of the most bloodthirsty, most ridiculous book in the Bible. It's horrific. It, it is horrific, that book. It, it should be X-rated. Um, so, there's a passage where it says, and God said to the people, okay, go into that nation, kill them all, kill them all. Ah, wait a minute, no. Kill all the men, kill all the women, kill all the young boys, but keep the virgins. Okay? Now, I'm looking at this through new eyes, through the eyes of somebody who perhaps uh, is normal, okay, and not sort of secular. Um, kill everybody except the virgins. This is God saying this. Now, I wonder what his motivation was. I wonder what his motivation was behind keeping the virgins. What's the difference between a woman, non-virgin, and a woman virgin. The difference is, um, apart from a hymen, 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 is, well, I don't know, is that they haven't had sex, okay? And therefore, the only benefit that could be gotten from keeping virgins would be to be able to have sex with them for the first time in their life, give them the best time of their life or not as the case may be. Other question I've got is this. How did they know that they were virgins? What what kind of test did they do to check that they were virgins? Now, it makes me always think of the Monty Python uh, film where the, the guy says, uh, crucifixion? Yes. Okay, pass. Um, crucifixion? Yes. Okay. Do you think they would have done the test like, um, virgin? Yes. Okay. You're right. Virgin? No. 
I don't think so. I think it might be a little bit more involved. I think there might be, it, the test may have been a little bit more hands-on. Um, and what what kind of God? Okay. God is love. God is love. There's another another um, a scri uh, scripture thing. So some, I heard somebody quoting Anthony DeMello, who I absolutely love, was quoting, "God doesn't keep account of people's sins." Okay. Um, Jesus said, "Turn the other cheek." Uh, God is love. Uh, which one? Which God? Not the God that said, "Kill them all," and keep the virgins. That's not. It, are we talking? About, did he die? Did it, and somebody have to come and take his place? It was obviously his, his nice brother or something. I don't know. But you see, doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. And I don't like it. It's, it gives me cognitive dissonance. It's like what what you're saying. God's good, or he's a shit bag, because I'm seeing a shit bag. Okay. So, kill everybody. Keep the virgins now. Is that something that you would expect from a loving God? Is that what you would expect a God to say? No, it's what you would expect a pirate to say. Okay, that's what pirates do. Kill all the men, kill all the women, or keep the virgins. That's a pirate. And frankly, I do not want to worship a God who is a pirate or a Viking. The Vikings did the same, didn't they? Rape, pillage, and then rape again. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got that. So, so God's and so he's a racist uh, in the Old Testament. He has his favourites, and he kills everybody else. Okay. And then there's another passage where where his prophet. Can you remember his prophet? I think it's Elisha. Is it Elijah or Elijah? I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's not important. It's one of them. Elijah, Elisha. And he's a prophet of God, and, he's, and unfortunately, when in the hair department, he was at the back of the queue when it was being handed out. So he was, he was a bit baldy, okay? And being baldy, uh, he was walking along the road one day, deep in his thoughts, obviously, and there was a group of young boys, teenagers, and they saw him, and they started to say, quoting, Go on up, baldy, okay? Or words to that effect, something like that, like, like hey, 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 baldy, um, something like that, having a bit of a laugh at his baldness. Okay, now, what would you want a god to do? I'm a parent, okay, if my son was making fun of somebody who was bald, then probably I would, I would probably punish him by, I don't know, no more PlayStation for the next month, or uh, right, you're not going out, and no pocket money. Yeah. Worst case scenario, a worst case scenario, tap on the bottom. Don't do that again. Depends how old he is, you know, because the, the bigger they are, they could hit you back, and that isn't fun. Um, but punishment, just and and balanced punishment. So what did God do? So the group of boys said to Elisha, hey, go on up there, baldy. And so he um, sent a bear, that would just happen to be close by, um, a bear there, and uh, the bear ripped them all to pieces, ripped them into bits, okay? Now, don't you think that that might be a tad extreme? Um, you know, he could have, I don't know what he could have done, but, God could have kind of, I don't know, he could have caused them a little bit of discomfort. He could have, I don't know, got them, he could have chopped a finger off, okay? Or, or I don't know, uh, a toe. Or given them a really big smack on the back, you know, that leaves a handprint, something like that, a really big one. But ripping them to pieces because they said baldy, that's not the God that I would want to worship. That's not a loving God. That's not the God that Jesus was talking about, was it? Is it? Because if it is, either Jesus was on drugs or he was just bigging him up and he really knew or he was talking about somebody else. Okay? But he certainly wasn't talking about the God who rips people to pieces for making fun of someone. Don't you agree? 
good. I'm pleased you do. So, so what have we got here? We've got a situation where um, God wants us to worship him and tells us that we've got to. And if we don't, he's going to kill us. But that doesn't mean that that's why we have to worship him and, and love him. Not because you're going to kill us. That has nothing to do with it at all. But we need to keep in mind that if we don't worship him, he will kill us. And that, that theme still goes down. Even even though Jesus has been, he's talking about God's love, God's love, God's love. No, no, no. The Jehovah's Witnesses still say, either do as we tell you, uh, also known as what God tells you because we are God's mouthpiece, or he's going to kill you. Okay? And in fact, the Jehovah's Witnesses are murderers by proxy. Pardon the expression, but they are the murderers by proxy. Why? Because they're just waiting for God to come and kill everyone. And they're okay with that. They're fine with that. God's going to kill everyone? That's all right. We'll go around and tell them. But whenever you want God, you do it. In fact, they've been, they've been dying for him to do it. They've been dying for people to die. But for ages, they've been waiting. Come on, God, get in the gear. Wipe these people out. So, is that a godlike quality? Wanting people to die? Wanting people to die? I don't think so. The next one will be the last one. And I just want to talk about something else that I think is rather ungodlike. And that's something God did. And he continues to do. In the Bible. Okay. See you soon.